Welcome to Rebuilding a Model Steam Plant. This is part two. Lifting the PM Research boiler from the baseboard and looking at how the parts fit together. Removing some dents from the housing using a small adjustable spanner and seeing which boiler looks the best for the job with the existing small Stuart steam engines. The scale of this model boiler plant really bothers me. The first problem I have with it is it's massive. It really is very large. Even though I really like the water tower, I really do dislike the plastic tank that's next to it. And I'm not too overexcited with the size of the condenser tank on the right, which because of its size is going to fill with condensate very quickly. I'm not going to make too many scathing comments about this steam plant. It really is very nice. I'm going to remove the boiler from the housing and have a look at it. As well as the copper boiler that I've just removed, I do have a kit to make another one of these. But unfortunately, building a second of these PM Research boilers is not something I want to do. And the only reason for that is I don't make boilers. It's not something that I've ever wanted to do. After I read the book by a man called K.N. Harris called Model Boilers and Boiler Making, that really put me off building one and it's lasted a lifetime. The boiler's housing support is a bit of a mess. It's a bit chopped up and cannibalised. I removed the big dent on the edge of it using a barco spanner. And believe it or not, that's quite a good way of removing dents on the edge of sheet metal. When I watched the video of the steam plant running, it didn't have this burner fitted. This is a commercial ceramic gas burner made by a company called Bix. These burners can be successful, but you really do have to be careful when you set them up, because if you get it wrong, the heat cremates the ceramic. This is a shot of the main base, with the bolts protruding through the bottom, and I think I'm going to leave these as they are, because the nuts are so tight on them, it's ridiculous. Here's a shot of the boiler. This is a very unusual design. It's a cross between an ordinary pot boiler, which is just a piece of tube with a flame underneath it, and a Scotch return tube boiler. The gas burner underneath the boiler boils the water, and on its way to the chimney, the heat goes through these five fire tubes. This boiler is designed for a multi-fuel system. This one's gas-fired, but I have seen them coal-fired, and I've seen them also using solid fuel pellets. I don't know the history of this one, but there is some soot down the tubes. This is one of the boiler end plates, and it has four doors, the top two doors are for putting the fuel in the boiler, and the bottom two doors, I would think, are for regulating the airflow through the boiler. And if solid fuel is being used, you can get rid of all the ash by opening the bottom doors. Here's the boiler sat on the bench, just being supported by the end plates. Behind the boiler is the casing, and to the left of the boiler is an inner casing which acts as a heat shield. When I remove the right-hand end panel, you can see how it works with the heat going up the chimney via the tubes. If you watch this steam plant running, you will see that there's an awful lot of piping on it. The link to the video, by the way, is included in the text and description of this video. If you do decide to watch the original video of this, you will notice that there's a lot of piping on it, some of which is now on my workbench. I intend to put this piping back to its component parts in a box marked PM Research Fittings. The boiler is assembled in a very similar manner to a Stuart 500 and 501 boiler. I don't know why this studding is so long though. But for the moment I'm assembling the boiler just to see how it's put together. And I'm pleased to say that the design is good. The rotary latch on the end is just slightly too big, so it's quite fiddly to open the doors. The water gauge for this boiler sticks out of the side like this. Here it is, and I don't know what the brass shrouds are in aid of. I'm going to remove those. In fact, I'm going to remove the gauge glass too. This plant came with a propane tank. I assume it's a propane tank because it says refill with propane only. I'm just checking to see whether there's any propane in it. Yes, there is, but it's only gas. The idea of this is it fits inside this plastic box. But in my opinion, and from my experience, there's a lot wrong with this. It's all a question of getting the scale right. The water tower is a little bit under scale. But it's very well made and quite practical. This part, on the other hand, is far too big 
and in my opinion very overscale for this plant. And as for the propane tank, that's going to go in the recycle bin. The use of propane for powering steam models in this country seems to be not a very popular thing. Here is the hand pump for replenishing the water inside the boiler and this hand pump is also a PM research product. I will definitely be reusing this on the plant when I rebuild it. And I will be using some of this piping but first I'm going to dismantle it all back to the component parts. Once I've rebuilt this steam plant the piping will be nowhere near like it was on the original video. I really don't know what these brass shrouds are around the union nuts. Either way though, I'm removing them. Once I've stripped this boiler down, I'm going to sit it in my acid bath to descale it. Here's a very quick method for getting rid of the water gauge glass. I just broke the glass with a pair of pliers. The marks, by the way, down the side of the boiler casing were made by some duct tape which was used when the boiler was packed. I'm just saying that in case any viewers thought there were pieces of glass. I'd like to mention that throughout the breaking of the glass sequence I was wearing eye protection. I think it's time to sit back and have a think about this project. I love the water tank, I think it's delightful, especially if it was used for a small garden railway. The baseboard is the size of a small town. It is, in my opinion, far too large for the two small engines that sit upon it. And I'm afraid I do not have a place for this fake plastic tank in my rebuild of this steam plant. I think it will end up being a useful container somewhere in the workshop to hold things. Both of these steam engines on this massive baseboard are Stuart Models steam engines. And I'm thinking, when I put it back together, maybe I should use a Stuart boiler. This is a Stuart 501. And what spoils this shot from a perspective point of view is the physical size of the gas canister holder. A Stuart 501 boiler would provide more than enough steam for a Stuart S50 and a number 10V driving a generator. Alternatively, because of the size of the baseboard, I could have a complete rethink. According to the available space, I may be able to fit a Stuart beam engine in between the two existing engines. That would justify having a baseboard of this size. But then three engines would need a larger boiler. Luckily, I have a Stuart 504 boiler. The plastic gas tank holder still looks ridiculous against the 504, but it's not necessary to have such a large boiler as a 504 for two such small engines, but with the beam engine in the middle, maybe. My problem with steam plants of this physical size is where do you put them when you're not using them? In my house, I have an area where I can store steam engines. Because I build and rebuild them, play with them and then usually sell them. But they do take up quite a lot of space. I have been known to cut some steam plants in half. One of the reasons for that is because steam boilers are not normally in the same place as the steam engine. The only saving grace about this giant baseboard is it's split into two areas. It has a wooden floorboard side where the engines are mounted on plinths and then it has a stone effect side where the boiler and the water tank and this gas canister thing is. I think I can tolerate this steam plant because the baseboard is also very well made. I'll give it some thought in the next episode and see what I can come up with. All I can say is when it looks right, it is right. And that's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says video playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.